Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire have been under immense fire from everybody who has a functioning brain out there. Tim Pool is now jumping on the whole train of going against the Daily Wire and Ben Shapiro, talking about Candace Owens' gag order from the Daily Wire after they offered for Candace Owens to debate Ben Shapiro. Apparently, Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire were just bluffing that whole time, knowing that there was a gag order either already on or going to go out against Candace Owens, and they were never going to do the debate. They never were. The Daily Wire, you know, Ben Shapiro, they never had any intention of debating Candace Owens because they would make, get made to look out like fools. Like Candace Owens would destroy Ben Shapiro or anyone who is against her stance on this certain situation. They would 100% get destroyed by Candace Owens. Everybody knows it. And if you disagree, let me know in the comments why you disagree. Anyway, let's get into Tim Pool's reaction to this whole Candace Owens versus the Daily Wire thing. It's getting crazy out there. Let's check this out. It is a culture war debate. Why did Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens not debate the issue of Israel, Palestine, anti-Semitism, etc.? Well, according to Glenn Greenwald, the Daily Wire had a prior restraint gag order against Owens, preventing her from actually having this debate. He argues in his Locals post that when Candace Owens said she wanted to debate Ben Shapiro, the Daily Wire went after her saying that was disparaging our company and a violation of our non-disparagement agreement. Now, it appears in the article, a comment from Jeremy Boring, co-CEO of The Daily Wire, denies this, saying it's inaccurate to the point of being false. And I'm going to tell you uh, right off the bat, it doesn't seem correct, this this, this narrative. And uh, I know that Glenn Greenwald and there are many, I guess you call them uh, um, disaffected liberals that are very much in favor of the protests that we're seeing, not to accuse Glenn of anything, but I think uh, this is this comes off as a bias against the Daily Wire. There are a lot of people who don't like the Daily Wire because Ben Shapiro has overtly defended intervention in the. In well, because how could you like the Daily Wire, Tim? Like, do you guys agree that there's a ton of people out there that don't like the Daily Wire for no reason? Or do you think there's a reason? Why we don't like the Daily Wire right now? It, it, probably never going to again. They're kind of bud lighting themselves. They literally, you know, have been pro free speech, pro facts and logic this whole time. That's what they've been making their name off of. And now Tucker Carlson goes on on the Joe Rogan experience and says that maybe we should question some of the things that the government and the mainstream media tells us. And they lose their minds and say that oh, if you question anything the government tells you, you're not a critical thinker. In fact, you're anti-American. That's what Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire say about Tucker Carlson. Candace Owens just questions what's happening in the Middle East, questions, you know, the fact that America is funding wars that we really shouldn't have anything to do with. And what happens? Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire fire Candace Owens for that for speech. This this place, this company, media company that made their name off of being pro free speech and, you know, pandering to an audience that's pro free speech. It's not pro free speech at all. Ben Shapiro and the Daily Wire don't care about free speech at all. They care about money in their pockets and that's it. In the, uh, when it pertains to Israel. And there are a lot of MAGA America First types who do not want the U.S. spending any money overseas. But let's do this. The, the bigger story here, we have this article from uh, just early, uh, earlier last month. Ben Shapiro, Candace Owens split reflects how Israel anti-Semitism divide the U.S. right and what the big picture is. So we'll talk about this news and then we'll get into where we currently are with this narrative that the anti-Semitism bill has banned the Bible. I'm exaggerating. The argument from people is that it made certain passages anti-Semitic, which could get you fined or uh, I don't I don't think there's criminal charges for violations of the Civil Rights Act. I think it's it's civil or I think I think it's a, a fine. I think it is criminal, but I think it's a fine. Anyway, let's uh, let's read. It's ridiculous either way. I mean, I don't want to go too far in depth into that topic right here, but I don't know, dude. The fact that Tim Pool is kind of defending it a little bit, you know. It's it. I don't know. It, it's a little weird. <laughs> Let me know in the comments. If, am I reaching a little bit, or is that just a? a it makes you feel a little weird. <laughs> Read the story from Glenn Greenwald. And we'll break this down and give my thoughts on it. Uh, Glenn Greenwald writes: On April fifth, Candace Owens publicly invited her former Daily Wire Daily Wire colleague Ben Shapiro to a debate about Israel and the current definition of anti-Semitism. It was Owens' criticism of U.S. financing of Israel and her criticisms of Israel's war in Gaza that caused her departure from the Daily Wire two weeks earlier. Now, I, 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 I don't think that's that's correct. I say it was Owen's criticisms of U.S. financing Israel that that caused her departure. I don't I don't think that's wholly correct. I, Ben's just, I'm sorry, Glenn's just asserting that. I think it played a role for sure, 
But uh, as many people pointed out, she left the Daily Wire March around the same time, three years later, uh, three, uh, three, uh, around the same time that she had signed the contract three years earlier. Sorry. So a lot of people if you enjoy content like this and make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel. It really does help me out a ton. Let's get back to the video for sure. Bull Shapiro and the Daily Wire's CEO, Jeremy Boring, responded by saying they would like to arrange the debate requested by Owens that night. Shapiro appeared to accept the offer, writing on X. Sure, Candace, I texted you on February 29th offering this very thing. The Daily Wire co-founder added, let's do it on my show this Monday at 5 p.m. at our studios in Nashville, 90 minutes live streamed. After Owens objected to the format and timing, she and Boring exchanged several tweets in which they appeared to be negotiating and then agreeing to the terms of the format of the debate. Owens had suggested the debate be moderated by Joe Rogan or Lex Fridman. Hey, now, now hold on there. I believe she also mentioned my name. <laughs> and I was like, yes, we'll do it. Uh, but I do think Rogan uh, would would be would be good. I actually think Lex Fridman would be would be pretty good. Uh, I'm, I, I don't know if I'm just the only person in the world that thinks this, but dude, I, I there were so many things that I would rather do than watch a Lex Friedman podcast. Those things are the most boring podcast and debates of all time. That man could make, I, I don't know, he, he makes watching grass grow. I, I don't want to roast him too much, but those podcasts are horrible. Please don't let Lex Friedman host this debate if it ever does happen or host any interesting debate ever. If Candace Owens of the Daily Wire actually debate and it's hosted by Lex Friedman, I'm going to lose my mind. I'm going to I'm going to lose my shit, dude. That will be the worst debate of all time. Please let Joe Rogan or Tim Pool host a debate, please. I'm not a big fan of Fridman. I don't mean that to say I don't like him. I'm just saying I'm not like I don't listen to his stuff. You know what I mean? Yeah, because it's it weird when you say something like I'm not a big fan. It sounds like you don't like them. No, I just don't like, listen to Lex Fridman. I think he would be really good for this, actually, as he is a rather um, calm and neutral uh, uh, party in this. Shapiro said he wanted no moderator. They ultimately agreed to the terms with Boring offering a series of conditions, including a no moderator debate with Owens publicly accepting. Two weeks later, many readers of both Shapiro and Owens noticed and complained the debate had not yet happened. On April 24th, Owens addressed those inquiries by explaining the Daily Wire had yet to propose the dates, while reiterating her strong desire to ensure the debate happened. But the debate was never going to happen. That is because the Daily Wire, in secret and unbeknownst to its readers, sought a gag order to be placed on Owens after she had called for a debate. They did this under the cover of secrecy, before a private ar arbitrator at exactly the same time when they were claiming in public that they wanted this debate and were even negotiating the terms with her. To this date, the Daily Wire has not informed its readers, seeking to understand why the much-anticipated debate had not yet happened, that they had sought and obtained a gag order against Owens. The first thing I'm going to say is, as someone who is involved in and has been involved in arbitration and lawsuits, it's not this simple. And uh, also knowing uh, the Daily Wire crew, Jeremy, well, the thing is, when this whole thing broke, when this whole news broke, I think what Tim Pool is trying to say is that Glenn Greenwald and, and people who broke this news are biased against the Daily Wire. And obviously, that's not good if they're lying on purpose. But when this whole thing broke, Candace Owens did have some, you know, she she, she made some tweets. Obviously, she doesn't want to speak again on it because it's a legal matter. But she made some tweets that kind of hinted at, yes, there is something going on, you know, without without saying it directly. So I don't know why Candace Owens, like she doesn't seem like that type to bait people like that. She seems a lot more professional. I don't think Candace Owens would be tweeting stuff like that if there wasn't something going on, you know, and it seems like there probably is a gag order ag against her, you know, to, that, that's, that's been imposed on her because she was tweeting in a way that made it seem like, yes, this is true without saying it, because obviously it's, it's a legal matter. So I get what Tim Pool is trying to do here. He's trying to stay neutral. He's trying to make sure that no misinformation gets passed around. But I mean, it seems everything is checking out, right? Like Ben Shapiro, the Daily Wire, they didn't come out and deny it. And Candace Owens didn't deny it either. She, in fact, kind of played into it more. Like I said, I don't think she's at, at, un unprofessional enough to play into something that's a blatant lie. Uh, and Candace, I don't think it's so simple as to say that Jeremy behind the scenes was like, we're never going to have this debate. Mwahaha. I, I would believe it. I think that Ben Shapiro would be terrified to debate Candace Owens on this topic because he would lose. Let me know in the comments if I'm wrong. Probably things that are actually prohibiting them. And uh, he actually denies it in this. But uh, let's, let's read more and then we'll, we'll break this down. When seeking a gag order to be imposed on Owens, the Daily Wire accused her of violating the non-disparagement clause of her agreement with the company. To substantiate this accusation, the company specifically cited Owens' initial tweet requesting a debate with Shapiro as proof of this, dis this disparagement. Along with concerns, she voiced that Shapiro appeared to be violating the confidentiality agreement 
between them publicly, maligning Owen's views to explain her departure from the company. Well, the company claimed before the arbitrator that it did not object in principle to a healthy debate. It urged the imposition of a gag order on Owens by claiming that the way she requested the debate constituted disparagement of Shapiro and the site. Now, hold on there a minute. Does that mean no debate will happen? It sounds like the argument so far, based on Glenn's reporting on this, assuming it's all true, is that they said the way she's doing this is disparaging us. We could do a debate, but calm down. Perhaps. Come, come on, Tim. Like, I understand, once again, I understand what Tim Pool is trying to say here, but that's not, that's not the case. The Daily Wire, Ben Shapiro, like, they, dude, they, they're notorious for running away from, from big debates. You know, they, they'll debate college students. They won't debate anybody who actually knows their stuff, especially somebody who used to work for the same company as them that knows the way they think, that knows the way they debate and has the upper hand when it comes to, you know, the facts and, and the logic of the situation. They would never debate Candace Owens on this. There's no way. They're running. 100% they're running. To justify the gag order wanted, the company also cited various criticisms of the Daily Wire and Shapiro on X that Owens had liked. This proceeding took place as part of an exchange of legal threats between the parties after the public agreement to debate about Israel was solidified. Those threats arose from the fact that various Daily Wire executives and hosts in both public and private were castigating Owens as an anti-Semite. On March 22nd, Daily Wire host Andrew Clavin published a one-hour video that hurled multiple accus accusations, including anti-Semitism, at Owens. The Daily Wire cited Owens' response to that video, her defense of herself from those multiple occasions, as further proof that she needed to be gagged. Now, I will say, I saw this and I think Clavin was absolutely wrong, misinterpreted a, a post about Candace Owens, believing it to be true. Candace Owens responded. The initial tweet from Owens was not only requesting uh, not uh, initial tweet, not only requested a debate, but also included a video from the popular comedian Andrew Schultz, who had mocked the Daily Wire for firing Owens over disagreements regarding Israel. And I don't think I, I know exactly what clip, you know, I kind of do this a lot. I mean, I make this content a lot and I covered that clip from Andrew Schultz talking about Candace Owens being fired from the Daily Wire. I don't think he was mocking them at all. He was just saying that it's very obvious that they're not America first. Like it's it's very obvious that they're not America first, that they're firing someone like Candace Owens for simply speaking her mind about being truly America first. Like Matt Walsh claims he's America first, and I think he is. But I don't think he'll actually speak his real thoughts on the situation because Matt Walsh knows if he does speak his true thoughts on the situation, the Daily Wire is going to give him the Candace Owens treatment. He's going to get fired because he doesn't agree with what Ben Shapiro and Jeremy Boring have to say on it. And if on this one topic, you're not allowed to disagree with Ben Shapiro on this one. Candace Owens did, and, and she got fired. And now they're running away from her debate. I think, no doubt about it. Let me know in the comments if you disagree. Anyway, let me know in the comments what you're thinking about Tim Pool's response to this whole gag order stuff. I mean, I, I think it's pretty obvious they're trying to run away from Candace Owens and run away from that debate and run away from looking stupid on social media because Candace Owens has immense, infinite ability to make them look stupid on social media now by just exposing everything but obviously there's legal things in place that they're going to use to make sure that that doesn't happen anyway let me know in the comments what you're thinking about this whole tim pool candace owens daily wire situation if you enjoy content like this and make sure you leave a like and subscribe to the channel it really does help me out a ton let's get back to the video